It was a good day. Yeah, really We had good. one plan, <laughs> and we accomplished it. I'm really proud of you. I was a little bit nervous about this job. Well, I was like, oh, goodness. How many ladders does it take to put some sheet metal in? <laughs> After a couple of weeks of Don managing his kidney stone pain, he'd work as much as he could in the morning and then pretty much go lie on the couch. So there was definitely no working on the bus during that period. And a few bus troubles. Pretty easy access to it, Don. I <laughs> can't even find it yet. No. Oh. We were ready to get started on the next big job. We picked up RV windows at a salvage yard. How's it going there? You oh, girls. And we're ready to take the next step towards installing them. Called around seven different places for sheet metal just to get quotes and varied about 30%. The quotes I got ranged from $440 all the way to $700. So it's all sheet metal. We're going to go with the $440 version. So I think we'll be able to get enough sheet metal to cover this side and half of the other side. We're up early. We're going to try to see if we can learn how to put the sheet metal in. We can learn how to. Yeah, this is the learning day. So first thing we gotta do is pull out the existing window. Dad's up helping us. Got the ladders ready. So I'm just gonna unscrew it from the inside and we'll see if it comes out. It's a little dark in here this morning, but we got skylights, so it's gonna be an easy fix. Skylight cup. We got light. All right, what we're gonna be doing is pulling out this window here. This is the first window in the bedroom. If we didn't tell you already, our updated, revised, again, plan is. Our bus window plan was to pull out all but three windows out of the passenger side, skin the openings with sheet metal, add our RV side-to-side -side windows with slides and screens in the front, two up-down windows with slides and screens above the dining room table, and a side-to-side -side window with a slide and screen in the back bedroom. On the driver's side, we plan to remove all the bus windows, skin the side with sheet metal, add our RV side-to-side -side windows with slides and screens in the front, and an up-down window with a slide and screen in the back bedroom. But in order to do that, we needed to learn how to pull a window out, which was much easier than I expected. First, we took all the screws out of the inside of the T-ring. All right, I got all of them out. And then we were able to just push, pry a little, and that window was ready to give way. The only trick I think is gonna be managing it. If you have some scaffolding, highly recommended. If you got a couple wonky ladders, <laughs> like we do, I don't know if I recommend it, but it'll work. It was good to have three of us with the wonky ladders um, to be able to manage it. That's not too wonky. I was really surprised to see that the factory sealant on this thing was so minimal. Yeah. If you've seen the other videos of us during the demolition, couldn't believe how much sealant there is and just how strong it is. But with these windows, once the screws are out, it was able to just be pushed right out of the hole. We had to take out the rubber runner that runs underneath the windows and grip rail that's above the windows, we took out two. There's already a little bit of body paneling on the very edge, and I'm not gonna remove it simply because at the very top, it wouldn't be flat. On the other side, we'll pull all of it out. So we're gonna leave it in. Up in the front, we're doing three windows there, so we'll take it out of every place after the first one. Then we got our piece of sheet metal up, and Don and his dad took a look and tried to figure out first how are we going to fit it in that space to kind of have a game plan. How 
that have to come up too? Yeah. Okay, this goes underneath there, right? Yep. Gotcha. So you wanna see if you can get it underneath from that with this? We had to take out the grip rail that's above the windows and once we took that out we realized our metal then felt a little too small. I could have got another inch and a half of metal and it would have tucked up there perfectly. Uh, it should be okay because we're still going to be able to tuck it in under the roof metal as it curves over but it'll just be a quarter of an inch tucked in instead of an inch, a full inch. Um, with all the sealant, as long as it does tuck in under and we do have the metal, I think we'll be okay. I'm okay with that. All right, Mello, we're gonna do it one more time and then we can mark the inside so that we can just double check. Okay. Because if we get this right, then we can use this for everything else. We did a lot of measuring, moving it around until we finally settled on how far up under the roof we were going to go with it. And we decided to go on a quarter of an inch. So it just tucks in under with lots of sealant. We we're hoping that it will stay sealed. After they figured that out, <laughs> Don made marks where he was going to put the rivets in. We pre-drilled holes in the steel sheet metal because the less you have to hold that thing up and drill through more metal while it's up at a 90 degree angle, the better. Much easier to do all the pilot holes while you've got it off. Smooth there. Now we're ready for a good cleaning. Right. At that point, we were just about ready to get the new piece of <laughs> siding up. Now our plan along to get our sheet metal up and on to the side of our bus was to attach it three ways onto our frame. The first way is gonna be with this 3M tape. We're using 3M5952 VHB tape. This is specifically made for panel adhesives, and it's supposed to be a really great instant way to bond panels onto the side of a vehicle. Then we decided it would be best for us to go ahead and use our polyurethane sealant that would go around the edges. For sealing the edges, we're gonna use the Sika Flex 221. This is what Sika, the manufacturer, recommends for metal to metal bonding. It's a flexible sealant. Sika is great for automotive and for our conversion, we're gonna be using a ton of this kind of stuff. So that way, once we had the metal up against the frame, the tape would hold it, but that polyurethane sealant would be able to make sure it was sealed tight. Donna said then picked it up and held it up close to the hole in the wall. I applied the Sika Flex sealant around the edge of the tape, peeled off the sticker for our 3M tape so that we could put it in place. That was kind of the trickiest part was getting the glue on and getting it in place, but they did an excellent job. They'd pre-planned it so well that they kind of put it in place and it's stuck that, straight away. That tape did a fantastic job of just holding it in place instantly. So I'm really thrilled with that. And then for the piece de resistance, we used rivets. We're gonna be using stainless steel rivets. And my dad's got the rivet gun over here. Is it all set up? Hope so. And then just in case we need to, we got a hand riveter. <laughs> Riveting was fun. <laughs> we did a practice round to fix the bird feeder. Oh, that's right. <laughs> All right, we're doing a test rivet on the old birdhouse that broke.
that. Voila, birdhouse is fixed. After that, we were ready to go ahead and use our pilot holes as a guide on the sheet metal and drill into the frame of the bus. Now, before we put our rivets in, every time we took our cock gun with a silicone sealant, filled in those rivet holes so that there's an extra bit of waterproofing in the entire process. You can never have too much sealant. Yes. <laughs> really well. There was only a couple spots where it actually didn't break off the end of the rivet. I know that it's common, I just don't know why. So we're gonna have to look and see if there's a simple solution or something we're doing wrong. But for the most part, we just kept trying over and over and it would cut it off. One down. All right. Um, yeah, let's just scoot over. I just want to put some sealant in that and put a couple of rivets four in rivets in it. Okay. All right. Oh. Okay. I think I need to get out of the sun. Yeah. I think we all do. Good job, team. Good job. It was a good day. Yeah, really We had good. one plan <laughs> and we accomplished it. I'm really proud of you. I was a little bit nervous about this job. Well, I was like, oh goodness. <laughs> the making holes in the bus is a really scary thing. Like, you know, but. Well, we did one. We have 10 to go. Yeah, but you know, the first one is always, like the first time we do something, it's always such a learning curve and there's so much to figure out. Normally, like a bunch goes wrong and I thought this went really smoothly. Other than the metal, it would have been better to be taller. I thought everything went really smoothly and you just, you know, you moved past that and figured that out and made it work. But I was pretty impressed. I guess the real test is when it rains in a couple days, make sure there's no leaks. I was really pleased to see the sealant pushing out pretty much everywhere around the metal, which means we'll have a good seal. That's a good feeling. We did have to clean it up a little bit. It's white. I'm not sure why it's white, but hopefully we can sand it or paint it over once it's dried or just cut it off. I think you can just cut it off if it's all your thing. This is one of those points in the bus build where it just doesn't look pretty, but you know that eventually you can climb it and paint it and it's all gonna be the way you want it. With huge thanks to my dad over there who helped us out. Couldn't have been able to do it without uh, the extra help. For sure. Yeah. I'm so glad. Your dad just walked in the house, but if you're watching this video, thank <laughs> you so much, dad. We're gonna get a What's that, Vicky? Oh, the cock gun. Um, electric, Mechanic one? Electric one. An electric one. Battery operated. Battery, oh, something that works better than our uh, glue thing. Yeah, our good cock gun is my dad's, and it just stopped working. And we have two others that we bought, and they're horrible. They're useless. <laughs> <laughs> they're not horrible, they don't work at all. So we're gonna invest <laughs> in a cock gun. Big shout out to our newest BFF in the Habit Tribe, Kat Crimmins. The support on Patreon goes directly into helping us keep motivated to make videos, but it's also really wonderful to think about, gosh, we gotta do 10 more of these windows and we don't have a cock gun and it wasn't in the budget. And now we can do it because of the support from all the people on Patreon. If you're interested, we'll include links below. 
if you join the Rehabba Tribe, you'll get bonus videos from us. So we show you behind the scenes footage, cutting room floor footage, how we film, we do polls and you get to be involved in our videos and what we make and how we make them. And if you would have been a patron a little while ago, you would have got free stickers. Just saying. Who knows when the next <laughs> exciting freebie might come along. Very true. Yeah. Good morning. I'm going to try to take out this last window and the window we pulled out yesterday. We're going to replace it. The reason being is because there's this funky hatch right here. It leaks air. It's a great place for insects to get in. And we don't really know why we would need that. So we've decided to just go ahead and replace it. But I gotta get everything set up first so that when my dad and Ella get out here, we'll be ready to go. Oh, the drip rails that we pulled off, they got a lot of adhesive and tape stuck over from the manufacturer. So I'm just gonna try to get those cleaned off so they'll be ready to put back up once we finish today. as we thought it would be. We got up early again with the plan to beat the heat and all we wanted to do is put the window we took out yesterday into the back. We thought it was gonna go really easy and piece of cake and well, just didn't turn out quite that way. <laughs> After we pulled the back window out, we got the window we pulled out yesterday up there, got an adhesive and sealant around it, ready to go, pushed it in, and it just would not go in. Yeah, it just didn't seem to fit right in the space. And if it was fitting at the top, it didn't fit at the bottom, and when it was fitting at the bottom, it didn't fit at the top. Trouble lining up. Once we have a rubber mallet, hit your wife. Never forget it. Looks like it's leaning. Yeah. Yeah. One. After taking the window out and putting it back in a few times, we realized it was just not fitting properly. There had been an issue with that back window. It was the lavatory window. Mm -hmm. and, and we wanted to replace it because it had like a little hole. It could be open <laughs> from the outside. I don't know why you needed a, I don't know. It was, I don't know what it was there for, but we didn't want that. That's why we wanted to just replace the window. So after we pulled it out and couldn't get it to fit back in, Mella had a great idea. So the window wasn't good fitting in nice and snug. We couldn't get it to bite and pull in, and we're not sure why. We decided to pivot from this idea and just change our plan. <laughs> I'm getting cold in my hair. Um, and take the window out, and we're gonna take off this caulking right now and then put sheet metal in. I'd rather have something that's well sealed because it just didn't feel like that window was gonna seal properly and probably have any. So, if it's not working, pivot. I just thought, well, we've got sheet metal, let's just close it up. Yeah, and the more I thought about it, it will be great because that's where my office is supposed to be. By not having a window there, I don't have all of these limitations for how I can build my studio desk, for where I can put my monitors, because I gotta be very careful of putting anything near glass, as you can imagine. Yeah, and we can insulate it really well and keep it cooler in the back. So I think, I think it's a good thing at the end of the day. The 
second one went so much smoother. We knew our measurements, we knew how many rivets we needed, I even knew the distance between the rivets, so it was pretty easy to prep, get the metal ready, and we were able to get it up there and rivet it in in no time. inside and see when I push in on this Mella if that's going to do it or will we have to cut in on that. I don't know if we placed the back piece of sheet metal slightly crooked or what, but we needed to shave off a little after it was in place to clear the body molding. I got this bent up. Uh-huh. All you have to do is just zip, zip it that way and you don't have to cut into the bus. Okay. After sanding it down and adding a couple more rivets, We were hoping it was sealed properly. I know. Another one of my nice shirts ruined because... You should have put your work clothes on. It wasn't work time. We sat down, had dinner, we were ready to relax and go to bed early and then looked at the weather predictions for tomorrow. 7 a.m. We're scheduled for rain, which means we'd have no time to get up and get these drip rails on. So we just had to do them this evening so that the rain wouldn't be hitting our brand new stainless steel where that caulk is still drying. Except that we decided not to put any caulk on the second drip rail because it actually has to come out again because we're going to be taking the front three windows out on this side of the bus in the future. So we didn't want to seal it up quite yet, but we thought we should at least put it back in because there's four days of rain coming. Part two of sheet metal done. And the real test comes because it's four days of rain and we can make sure we've sealed it up real good. I think we did, but I like the fact that it rains so much and we get these tests. But we also learned a few things that would be helpful, a few tools that would be helpful that we're gonna go get so that it can go even quicker when we do the next one. We got sheet metal one in, and now we got sheet metal two in, which we didn't plan. So all we've got left is sheet metal three and four, and? Five and six and seven and eight, and nine and 10. Keep going. 11. And? 12. There you go. Okay. <laughs> But, what are we going to do? Uh, I don't know. We're going to share it with them next time. Oh. But. <laughs> we'll share that with you next time. <laughs> Just me in the boob. Sorry. <laughs> there had been an issue with. <laughs> <laughs> if we're successful, we're going to only have two manufacturer's windows in the bus. What? Really? Yeah. Um, hey. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> uh, we got this tape. Are you tapping me because you love me? Or are you tapping me because uh, you don't know. Did, did something wrong? No. Oh. I didn't realize I was doing that. Picked up the metal sheet and held it up against, well, close to the, held it up and close, waterproofing in the entire process. Oh, I'm like this to get out of the sun. It keeps going on me. Real time updates where you tell you what we're doing. Let me do something. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. You do that part.
bloopers. 